Woohoo everyone! This video contains spoilers for the story Auntie Toasts the VR MMORPG for chapter 73. This video is about the rating system of the Set Weavers. Yeah, the rating system. I believe I overthought it. <laughs> I did too much thinking on it, yes. Everything I will show you can change, could change. I do change it regularly. So it's just a basis for, for the future developments of the rating system. To sum it up, everything in the Z3 boss gets rated. The player have a rating as well. After one week of playing, the system gives them a kind of overall rating. To be precise, two kinds of overall rating. One rating, how they measure up to other people on their level. And this is this part, uh, the left part of the screen. And one rating, how they measure up to all the players over all levels. In this video I want to introduce you to the things that play into these summed up overall player ratings. And let's leave it like that, we, we see if we do not a bit more on the end. So let's start. On the top you see the categories. It's triple S, double S, S, a, B, C, D, E. E means the bottom 20%, D uh, until 40%, C until 60, B 80, and A 98%. The top 2% of all the players, no, not of all the players, the top 2% of a special category are rated S. The thousand best in this special category are rated SS. The three best or three one to ten best, it depends how much distance there is to the next person, is rated triple S. So I distinguished the rating of the players in my percentages I just told you to the rating of the category. The thing is, much more than only 20% are rated A, because the rating is weighted. So this is to appease the players that they don't get too bad ratings, because Central Tank is a company and they don't want people depressed with rating E. So uh, you have to keep that in the back of your mind. So there are many people who are rated A and B, especially B. Because yeah, it, it's weighted. Here you see the weights. Your best uh, category is weighted with 30%. So 30% of the overall rating is just from your best category. This means if you are a bit talented and you have one thing you are really good at, you are rated A in it, and uh, you have a few things you are not that bad in, let's say uh, rather good and rated B in it, you can easily get a B rating overall, even if you suck at many of the other things. Now, you see the three best categories make up more than 50% uh, of the rating, so if you don't suck too badly, you will get a pretty, pretty decent rating. And I mean, I think that's totally alright to be more generous uh, with the ratings. You can, as a player, display your dungeon rating or your PvP rating separately on your badge, so people will see, oh, okay, maybe the overall rating is only B, but the PvP rating is A or S, so can specialized people display their strength even if their overall rating is not on the top of the pack. So let's look at the different categories. 
here in the first line we have the uh, sum and currently it's Flora's rating as of Saturday. I believe we have Saturday at the moment. Timeline. Yeah, Saturday one. Good attributes. Flora has very good attributes. They are S rated. So she's in the top 2% for every one of them. And in many categories, she's within the thousand best level one players in the whole game. Regeneration, this is her highest stat and it's over 100 and she's definitely within the top 10. But if you look at the, all the players in the game with all levels, her attributes look much worse. Regeneration is still pretty good because most of the players don't invest in regeneration and magical perception and physical perception as well. I might rate this down a bit. I'm not sure about it. I mean, it would be totally okay if this would be rated B as well. I currently have rated it A because physical perception is a bit important for sharpshooters, so we've got them who have higher stats, while magical perception only eccentrics invest in magical perception. So I believe uh, rating her in the top 20% of all players for magical perception is, is alright. The basis for the all players uh, rating I, of course, had to think about what is the average, how is the player population staggered between the level. So I thought 30% are in uh, tier 1, that's until level 24. Another 30% are under level uh, 50, 20% under level uh, 100. 10% uh, under 200 and only an absolute minority is between level 200 and level 250. And then I thought, hmm, what would be the bestest? <laughs> what would be their highest standard uh, attribute on this level? Yeah, so this is just a rule of thumb for my S basis for my estimating game. Yeah, I believe that uh, most players are casual gamers and of course there are all the people who only work in the virtual reality because they use the time dilation to work more. So the majority is relatively low leveled. Yeah, back to the categories. So attributes are the first category. We went over them. This subcategory, weighted attributes, this means how good is her best attribute compared to the other best attributes of the level 1 players. And her best attribute is regeneration, because some of the players have pushed, let's say, strength to a higher level then she has pushed regeneration, therefore, but she pushed it pretty hard, so I believe 11 is, pr is pretty alright for it as well. And that's the issue I said that I have spent too much brain power on this topic, <laughs> because it's unnecessarily complicated what I created here, and yeah, I don't want to get stuck on this, okay? I go up and down and on another day I think, no, maybe I do another number for it. Every time I look at it, I make changes. So this is highly dynamic and it's just to have some numbers. Yeah, actually I could do without it and just say, all right, these are the ratings and it doesn't matter to me if they are consistent or not. These are not facts. 
This is the Churchill quote, I only believe the statistics I made up myself. Yeah? I made up this statistic and I manipulate the statistics. It's, of course, the whole book is purely fictional, but this statistic is extremely fictional and extremely subjective, even for something completely made up. It comes in a guise of objectivity because it's a bleeping Excel sheet, but forget about it. Oh no, don't forget about it because you watch this video, uh, because you stop watching this video otherwise. <laughs> so just keep in mind, it's all in good fun, right? This explains why her best attribute is weighted so low in the overall rating because people have pushed their uh, best category with three stat points they get from leveling up. You get three free stat points every level. So her best and second best aren't that good, but overall her stats are pretty amazing because she trained a lot and the training was very widespread. Next category, Affinities. For her level, she got quite the amount of Affinities and got a lot of variety as well. She has many magical Affinities, but some uh, body Affinities and her growth potential is uh, quite good as well because level 1 characters have standard F-rated growth, not uh, F is not rated, but Eveline, her goddess, gave her S-rated growth potential in Faith so she ranks pretty well in affinity growth potential and of course i forgot attribute growth potential is more than great because of the body modification she did uh, during character creation let's take a quick peek on the affinities i totally forgot about the three affinities she got in um, character creation. I mean, having triple S rated affinities is pretty great. And here we've got the S rated affinity I told you about. F unrated is equivalent to C from the uh, growth potential. And it changed after the first week from F to C. So the game doesn't take into account any special th things. Everybody gets rated C at the beginning and you have to raise your rating through special quests or special achievements. Next, the abilities. She got some very high abilities. Yeah, She got a good variety, a good amount, and she has very, very good execution. She crafted a lot of S or even double S rated uh, things like the focuses and uh, other stuff. So she accomplished much, but uh, if you look at the, all the players, it's not that impressive. Of course, people who play the game for two years, they have a much larger amount and variety than her. Especially amount people grind crafting skills, like you grind it in games like World of Warcraft, that you just get a ton of mats and produce one bandage after another. That isn't Flora's kind of attitude towards crafting. She likes more the designing part and the creativity part, not the repetition part. We take a peek at her abilities. So the abilities are colored uh, orange is for crafting, red is for physical, light red is for physical, dark red is for combat, pink is for social, blue is for meditation, green is for survival, 
Do we have another color? Uh, yellow is for technology. Uh, so you see she got a spread over five or six different categories, which is pretty good. They roughly adhere to the uh, branches. Um, these are the colors for the branches and I believe only the trick branch is missing and the, the divine branch is missing. But abilities for divine, I mean, pff, maybe the spiritual is kind of both. I mean, pff, what could be there be for non-mana abilities, divine, I mean, regular praying. Do I really want to have pray as a skill? No, I don't think so. And uh, a trick would be something like breaking locks, stealing, sneaking around. She has none of this at the moment. She has hacking. Ah, I rated it as a combat ability and it is a kind of combat. It's cyber combat. But uh, you could also categorize it under technology, under trick, under crafting. Yeah, categories are uh, evil of its own. Skills. She has many, many, many skills, many skills. <laughs> the variety is all right, I believe. You, maybe I could even go to eight here, because most of her mana skills are uh, magic and crafting and uh, technology so i should show only level 74 <laughs> that would be better but she has a bit of trick a bit of warrior a bit of survival a bit of divinity so yeah i believe it's pretty widespread and there even is a social skill somewhere there. What was it here? Achievements? Quests? Here to quests I have to add that Flora had many quests where she didn't rate that well. Yeah? Like it was a C-rated quest or a D-rated quest and she rated B in the completion. There is a factor how good you do the quest compared to your skill level in the main related skill or ability. I mean, let's take all the free running quests. They are usually D or C rated, yeah? but when uh, Flora completed them with a B rating, she completed them much higher than their original rating and her own ability in free running. So she exceeded her own abilities in the completion of the quest. This thought process led to this rating. I already mentioned that I spent too much thoughts. <laughs> yeah, we will just leave it like this. Exploration? Yeah, Flora didn't do that much exploration at the moment. I don't know where this aid is coming from. Maybe because she explored character creation <laughs> very good. <laughs> I don't remember anymore. Uh, leveling? Uh, Flora has no leveling at all. Why is this zero and there are weights here? I don't know. Oh, maybe because nobody on level one has any stats here. What does this mean? This means it's averaging out on four. This kind of sucks. <laughs> oh, okay. So. Yeah, and there are many mistakes here, because everything is weighted and I copy-pasted a lot, so the highest is not always on the first uh, weight, so this whole 
Spreadsheet is a sham. It's a poor sham. <laughs> But as long as I have fun with it, I think it's alright. Scenarios. She did a few scenarios and she did them pretty well. So uh, you've got high rating here. Amount. There are people who did more. But there are people who did less. Mini games. Uh, grinding the XP counts as a mini game. And general mini games are located on the world. Sports and boards. Um, combat. She got a bit of combat in, but I could even go lower with this. But she did do pretty well. I mean, she died not often in combat. I believe only one time when she got one-shotted by the commander on Doom Moon and before that the fight with um, Ice Master Esau and it was a difficult fight so I could uh, go higher in this category. Social, um, she got uh, some friends and she got some good contacts like business contacts and she done a bit amount of trading and so she got some contacts, she's in a guild, yeah. So there is some, something here, but it's not special. She's no social butterfly. Trading, she's rating pretty well in this department, um, even uh, for all players. Of course, the amount is still not that much than uh, other players have, especially the big trading companies, but it's a lot. The training dummy synchronization game sold very good and her skins, especially the template for the skins, sold very good. So she's starting to make a name for herself globally. The activity, the sport and activity sector has her eyes on her already. The toaster sector not, because there is no toaster sector. But of course Flora will start the toaster sector and rule it with a marmalade fist. PvP? Yeah, we could go up with the variety here because she did the PvP in the Seven Masters Dojo, the poorly hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, PvP, and she did the regular arena PvP, and she did a robo melee PvP training with, um, with Mir, so that counts as well. I mean, that's quite a bit of variety. That's uh, three different kinds of PvP, but there are uh, many more kinds like a group based, battlefield based, naval PvP with ships, space PvP with spaceships. I could go on and on. So she did do three different kind of PvPs, but there are so many that it isn't a high amount yet. Execution is quite well. But yeah, you could go lower here as well. I mean, she lost quite a bit in hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat. But um, yeah, I mean, she did pretty good overall. But she did have a good learning curve. So dungeons. She has no dungeons at all. Four is the unrated number. So yeah. This is all unrated and amount is uh, lower than standard because none. Uh, crafting is of course one of her strong suits. She has made a triple S. Yeah, a triple S. Okay, with Evelyn's help, but it's a triple S. So that's very, very, very good. Yeah, I don't have to speak about Flora's crafting. If you re read the story, uh, then the good ratings are obvious to you. On the uh, all-player side, the amount is the worst thing. Like I told before, people grind non-stop for crafting. 
performance. That's a category for singers or painters. And Flora only got uh, one performance in. This was a kind of comedic element in the hunting lodge where the other players thought she did a performance, but she was just looking for, I believe, the King Gator caresses in her treasure chest. Reputation. I might delete the whole reputation system. Oh, no, not at all reputation. I might delete the whole fame system because I have mentioned fame only once. But reputation, she has a granted reputation with the seven master dojos, with Tricky Beach, with the garage. Amount. Oh, that's a bit high. Variety. Oh, she got a few factions in. So the variety is good, but I wouldn't say that good. Uh, solo combat. Flora did um, only a solo combat at the moment. Only when she fought against the bank robbers, she did team up with Robbie and Hub. Group tank is non-rated. Group healer is non-rated. Group support is non-rated. Group damage dealer is non-rated. Uh, realm. There is a realm building game in the set we boss. She didn't partook in this. Um, equipment. She has very, very good um, equipment. Here is a new subcategory, Aquiration. And she has a great Aquiration score as well because she crafted a lot of it by herself and she got a rich amount of a rich uh, variety in all her treasure uh, chests she is a little harder and um, <laughs> so equipment it, it looks good um, assets she owns a whole church which is a holy place that's pretty good that's really great even compared to other players and she earns good money, that's more on her trading, but uh, she got a lot of um, assets from Central Tank, so Aquiration is only 6, because uh, Central Tank rates Aquiration through settlements low. I mean, on one hand, it is something she deserved, but on the other hand, it's... I believe I misspelled Aquiration. Yeah, uh, the spelling was quite a bit away from the actual spelling, so acquirement, not acquiration. So these are the categories I have until now, and there might be more categories. If you know more categories, please uh, suggest them in the comments. I will add them because my point of view is very close to Flora's, so I of course added everything Flora is great in. <laughs> and uh, only a bit of other things like exploration. But I believe we've got the main points down of an MMO. We've got PvP, we've got PvE, we've got equipment, we've got exploration, we've got crafting, and we've got leveling, and achievements, and stats, and yeah, I mean, that's it. Good, that was the system to player rating. Now we take a little look at the ranking. So there is additionally to the player rating in which there are points like potential, like potential growth or how good your skills are, how good your abilities are. There are aspects like amount and variety, but the rating is more about potential. The ranking is more about what you have actually achieved, what you have actually done. So these are the points you get. So you get a place on the PvP leaderboard, you get 25 points for your player ranking, and your guild gets 25 points. 
and your guilds get points for your uh, ratings as well and points for your ranking so you, your rating has a minor influence on the ranking achievements count extra towards the ranking and the majority are leaderboards and competitions leaderboards of uh, pvp level nishi is something like a crafting leaderboard and these leaderboards only are for things you actually crafted not how good your crafting ability is or how it's rated for the niche leaderboard there are a specific kind of um, points you get for s rated a rated or b rated products this is for the whole um, leaderboard the points and there are then uh, sub tables for the niche leaderboards so i made a note here to add uh, crafting <laughs> as a niche leaderboard yeah and like the mini master said the easiest is to get in the dungeons uh, top by conquering undiscovered dungeons virgin dungeons and when you complete them you automatically go on the leaderboard so that's easy acquired points and a heroic dungeon is s rated Maybe it's R-rated, I'm not sure about this yet, because maybe I give more points for the 25 people dungeons and the 50 people dungeons and the 100 people dungeons. Yes, there will be massive dungeons in the future, but only in the higher levels. Yeah, so uh, the guild ranking is the sum of all the player rankings and I could swear that I made an attempt to add them up but I can't find it at the moment. So uh, we leave it like this. Thank you for listening and watching and I hope I could clarify a bit what uh, the player rating is and how it comes together. Bye-bye. Oh, and thank you for supporting Auntie Toasts, the VR MMORPG, and special thanks, of course, to my Patreon. Yeah, join them. There are three chapters in front of you, and bye-bye.